Okay, so we're looking at doing the basement now, and I've set my basement out already. Now I'll just bring down the grid lines so you can see what I've done there. So I'll just go to my selector tool, I'll pick up all my grid lines out to the side here. I'll move them down initially, the 3300. So they're now down at factory floor level but then I'm going to move them down a further amount which is the height between the factory floor level and the basement so and that, that, that dimension is in your sketch plan notes so you can refer to your sketch plan to figure out how far I've come down now in setting the basement level out and all my grid lines now are down at basement level now if I turn off some lots of other layers at the moment just to see well no I won't just now because I'll have a bit of a discussion y you can sort of see from the screen here at the moment uh, where the walls have got to go you can also refer to your sketch plan handout to see where these walls are going now these walls that I'm talking about if I can maybe select them yeah, I've got them all selected in blue at the moment, or most of them anyway. Um, they're 190 millimetre thick concrete block walls. So you need to create a new layer called concrete block wall or something like that. Create some walls that are 190 millimetres thick at an appropriate layout for the underneath of this building. Now, in class, we spent a lot of time coming up with some uh, sectional detail sketches of of the of wall section. So basically we did a section looking at a portal column, how that portal column connects to the concrete floor, um, how the tilt-up panels were on the outside of that, how in some situations uh, corrugated steel walling was on the outside sitting on wall girts, and in other situations concrete tilt-up panels were, and in other situations glass panels were. So in all those three situations then we came up with a detail which suited a concrete floor slab sitting there and we found out how much the concrete floor slab then had to offset from the grid line. Once we found out the extremities of the concrete floor slab then we could make a decision about the alignment of the concrete block walls underneath supporting that floor slab. Um, in all of that, in that set of hand sketches that we created, that then gave us an idea of you know what this dimension would be here if I just grab a tape measure from that there to there so when you find out that dimension and work through by doing your own hand sketches and by the way it's a requirement that you do your own hand sketches of these details so that they can go into your project file so that you are supporting your working drawings with some uh, some some sketch decisions as to where these walls can go uh, so if you didn't attend class you'll need to sit down and do those on your own doing some, some sketches that can go in your project file which determine the positions of these walls off the grid lines once you've determined that and, and the, it'll be a different offset at the back of the building so we've come up with a different offset from this grid line towards the back of the wall than we have for these walls along the side um, and you can also make some, and so that'll be a similar decision here um, the other wall at the back, I think this is grid Y5 from memory, I seem to have lost it I seem to have lost grid Y5, so there should be another grid in here 6 metres away Okay, so that grid there, that will, I'll, I'll give you this one, that this wall here will lie on grid Y5. So the, the car park basement uh, surface of that wall is on grid Y5 and the other wall goes behind it. But we've also done, once again, another sectional view in class of how the concrete slab sits on top of this wall here. So if you didn't attend class, once again, you'll have to work through your own hand sketch detailing of how that might uh, sit on the top of there. Always best and easiest path, of course, to attend class. Now, so once you've done that, this wall out here extends to the boundary and you've also got that information in your sketches about how far... The way we did it in class was we actually came from this grid line here and we, we worked out some mathematics based on uh, the hand sketches, the, the sketch plan handouts that you've been given and figured out how far this wall would be or this boundary wall for the, the neighbour's boundary 
and how far that would be from that grid line over there and that's what we set that wall out on. Bearing in mind we also made sure we came back another 50 or 60 millimetres from that point into our property just to make sure that we weren't, uh, we were well and truly clear of going onto the neighbour's property even though it's a built to boundary wall. So that's in a nutshell what you've got to do to determine those layouts and once you've done that I'll just give you another view, I'll turn off some other layers so you can see maybe what we've got going on through here, I might leave the four columns on, the four rafters on, but we'll get rid of a lot of stuff so you can see down through this. Okay, so that sort of shows you the layout and like I say if you refer to your sketch plan handout you, um, you can start working through and work through this layout of these walls but the fine positioning of these walls off the grid lines is up to you to sit down and work out through your own hand sketches. Okay, so we'll leave that there and by the time I pull, pull all of the layers back on that's uh, where we're up to at this stage. We're, s we're slowly getting this building pretty much locked up. Um, getting around to the front of the building and I'll turn off some of the images now uh, the office image uh, layer 0 and also the upper image so that's where we're getting to with this building we've got the um, and what we'll need to do next um, is we'll start working on the factory floor and then the slab for the basement level and then we've pretty much got this building set out to um, to lock up stage. Uh, the other thing was this back wall through here which becomes this side wall just for now leave it something like a metre above uh, the floor level of the basement and by the way once again we've discussed in class the fact that these walls here I want them to go down as you can see they go deeper past the grid line set out because I want those walls to go an appropriate distance below the floor slab to sit on their own isolated footing and then the slabs will have an isolation joint between these walls and the, um, uh, and the footings. Okay so that's that at that stage we'll stop the video there.